Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright, a consultant audiologist and director of Cluex. Thank you for joining me in another demonstration video of our soon to be launched Waxco. Uh, this is of a patient who attended with bilateral fully occluding earwax and I'm just showing you the right ear first. I actually treated their left ear in clinic first, but uh, the right ear was probably a bit more um, challenging. So for that reason, I thought I'll um, show you this one first. So I'm using our standard size speculi here, which is a 4.25 millimeter. We have a smaller one, which is a 3.5 millimeter. You can't really go smaller than that because, well, although you can, and, in, and indeed they are specular, um, smaller in diameter than 3.5 millimeter. They're not designed for instrumentation. Um, they're designed just for visualization. Um, if you get it any smaller than 3.5, you're really gonna struggle to um, insert the instrument and manipulate it in order to remove earwax. Um, then we've got a larger speculae, which is a five uh, millimeter internal diameter. And then we've got the extra large one for surgically operated ears, for example, a mastoid cavity, which is a 5.75 millimeter speculae. Now the wax scope is ready, guys. Um, so we are going to be launching it very, very shortly. And everyone on the mailing list will get an email, hopefully in the next fortnight or two. Uh, I'm just now busy preparing our training manual. Um, as you, many of you are aware, there's been a lot of um, issues regarding um, training uh, and candidacy criteria and um, so I, I, I'm just actually myself uh, uploading and upgrading all of my previous uh, material um, obviously since that last material I've myself learned a lot more um, become more skilled and experienced so I just want to impart that additional knowledge into the newer training material so I'm just really, really busy doing that at the moment. So that, um, if you are on the mailing list, you will hear from us very shortly. If you want to be on the mailing list um, for the launch of the Waxco, please uh, email info at clearwax.co.uk. Um, we're possibly looking to have our first training session end of February, um, the first week of March. So we are very, very imminent, but everything is uh, uh, in stock. Everything's... Um, there's just a couple of bits that are, uh, we're manufacturing in bulk now, and that's happening as we speak, and that should be uh, with me in the next couple of weeks. So it's all looking good. So as you can see with this wax, it is really impacted. It's fully occluding. I'm slowly extracting it forwards near to the entrance. There's a lot of um, dead keratin around the edge, around the perimeter, which is still attached to the canal wall. You can, with the wax scope, what's really fantastic about it is that you can actually see these um, um, the dead skin, the keratinous skin. Um, so it's very glossy in appearance and you can actually see the texture, the ripple effect on the skin itself. So for example, here on the right hand side, about two o'clock, you can see some shiny, glossy skin. Suction probe just got blocked there. So again, um, just on the right, so it's a slightly out of view now, but th there's, there's some dead skin there that not only attaches to the wax plug, but it's also still semi-attached to the, the canal wall and this dead skin it's almost playing tug of war with us it doesn't want to it's enveloped the wax plug it doesn't want to let go but here we really just wriggled it through just near the first bend now i'm just going to curve it round um, the first bend so it comes out without much resistance so the this is right Near the entrance, I would say it's just um, past the first bend again before the second bend, just on the roof. There's just a bit of dead skin, some soft wax. There is still some residual wax deeper in there. You're going to see that in a moment, at right up against the eardrum. And this is where I think the wax scope is going to come into its own. Um, we just adjusted the focus there, you saw that. Um, so, of course, with the endoscope, the view is unparalleled, but prior to the endoscope, I used to use head loops, and I just wouldn't be able to visualize. Um, detail like this uh, I wouldn't be able to remove wax very deep from the ear at all uh, with the head loops I'll, if I'm honest with myself uh, I would only possibly manage to remove it from the midsection of the ear kind of anything else it would just be too the magnification wouldn't be there the, the clarity wouldn't be there so it's a bit softer this wax I was hoping that piece I just attempted to remove would come out in one segment but it didn't and it's just in the inferior recess as I'm suctioning I'm going up you may have just noticed that, so up and away. And there is a little bit left. Truth be told, we could have possibly just left that, but I just went in with a fine end. The patient was very still. And you can see, um, you can see those 
radial um, fibrous tissue on the eardrum. So if you've been following my post on Facebook or LinkedIn or even Instagram or even TikTok, I've uploading some images recently of the eardrum, the anatomy, the physiology. I was talking about the middle layer of the eardrum, the fibrous layer called the lamina propria. And there you've got concentric um, oblique and you've got radial um, connective tissue, so fibrous connective um, collagen tissue and it almost forms uh, a spider's web um, configuration on the main body of the eardrum and that's what gives the eardrum its rigidity and strength and in this particular patient we, you could actually see those radial um, fibrous collagen connective tissue uh, in the middle ear oh sorry the middle layer of the eardrum so right ear is clear um, this is their left side it's a bit narrower actually um, so we're having to dilate the ear a lot more and you'll see the midsection of the ear canal was definitely much more um, narrower than the right side. Very sticky consistency of wax. And the key here is to try and elevate and separate the wax from the canal wall. So where all those hairs are on the right, that's the first band. So I'm just dilating the first band. I'm pushing the speculum into the ear and then angling it to about one or two o'clock. And that stretches the ear and quite often it's this region where uh, wax gets blocked. So the most common site for a wax impaction, unless it's been pushed in by the patient, is between the first and second bend. So the first and second bend is known as an isthmus. There's two isthmuses in the ear. And isthmus is the medical term given to a narrowing. Um, so in the case of the auditory canal, the first narrowing is between the first and second bend. That's where all the sebaceous glands that secrete sebum and the... Um, modified sweat glands called apocrine glands that um, secrete apocrine sweat. They're um, all located in, in the, um, the outer third, the cartilaginous portion, um, in between the first and second bends of the ear. And then as the skin migrates from the deepest part of the ear towards the entrance, uh, when it reaches the outer third of the ear canal, the skin begins to um, shed into individual um, skin cells. And we call that... Um, process desquamization and then these individual skin cells emerge with the sebum the, the apocrine sweat and then that's earwax that's the recipe for earwax um, so then the wax tries to move out of the outer third of the ear canal uh, and exit the ear but it's the first and second bend because it's narrow it can get trapped there so if you kind of release it from the back wall of the first bend it does help um almost separate the wax plug because it's that that's that is probably for me the most common area of the ear that you need to separate the wax before it comes out so it's, it's sometimes it can be a bit of a blind spot as well because it's just past the first bend um, to the right so we've got the more outer wax out this is more medial um, just to the left you can see that's the second bend a bit of skin just coating that it's a tight squeeze the suction probe the the zolna suction probe i'm using here also a um, 14 um, gauge a suction probe um, on the gauge system. So it's about two, 2.1 millimeters external diameter and internal diameter about 1.7 and 1.6. So if you consider it being 2.1, the external diameter, this patient's midsection of the ear canal is probably 2.3 or 2. up to no, no more than 2.5 in width. And we can tell that because the suction probe just only fits. So I've just um, loosen that plug. Uh, you can see how bendy this ear is as well. That's the second bend on the left-hand side. So we're just going to get it in focus. And again, you can actually see those. Um, in this one, you can see the parabid uh, fibres. So there's three fibres. Um, uh, well, this collagen fibrous connective tissue, but they're arranged in three different dimensions. You've got uh, the um, radially aligned, which as you could see on the, the right side, you've got the concentric ones, so the circular ones. Then you've got these more spirally oblique ones. And in this one, uh, hopefully you'll see it in a moment again when I get it back in focus, you can see the oblique um, arrangement of this fibrous connective collagen tissue. Um, we call that the uh, parabid um, arrangement. So I'm Ideally, actually, probably the smaller speculum would have been better just to dilate this ear, but I can still see the eardrum. That's the hammer bone. I'm going to get the past tensor in focus. And you, again, not only the oblique ones, you can see the, the radial fibrous 
um, connective tissue. So that's the, the wax that I removed. You can see it's quite dark, it's oxidized, it's been there for a while. You can see the dead keratin in between the two dark plugs. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you are interested in the wax, go please do email info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you. Bye.